Hey everybody, I'm Dave Chichi Mori. I'm the natural history curator here at the South Carolina State Museum. We're down in our storage room and in each of our cabinets we have hundreds of thousands of specimens and inside one of these we'd like to take you and give you an idea of what we've got. Not all of our collections are radioactive but a few specimens actually are and so we're going to take some precautions and we're going to take the doors off and we'll come back in five and talk more about what's inside. And we're back. So we took the precaution of taking the door off of the cabinet to let it air out a little bit because we do have radioactives in there. And there is a danger of radon buildup. So in order for us to not be exposed to that, we stepped away for a little bit. And now here we are to take a look inside. And here we have a collection of Megalodon teeth. And this particular one here in the bag it's not glowing, but it is radioactive. So just by being in the ground, some fossils absorb radioactive minerals like uranium. And this particular fossil we know from the Geiger counter we used is radioactive. Now, it's not very much, not much more than background radiation, but to be cautious, we've got it in a bag so that dust doesn't settle on it and become irradiated and then I don't breathe it in. Rest assured, not all fossils have radioactivity in them, so the fossils you find on the beach, you won't have to worry about them being radioactive and having you grow a third eye if you sleep with them under your pillow. So of the hundreds of thousands and maybe even a million specimens we have in the museum, the ones that we just took a look at are the few in the collection that have detectable amounts of radiation. Everything else you can see here, we've hit it with a Geiger counter and it didn't give us any indication that there was any radioactivity. Radioactivity is just one of the weird things that you come across in paleontology.